everyone, let's take a look at our free response question on our sample exam. So here we're gonna sketch a rational function and we're gonna make sure we label and scale our axes, put all these traits down, and then we're gonna sketch the graph. Now you can use algebra to do this or your calculator. I like to use a combo. Um, sometimes I do the calculator first, sometimes I do the algebra first. I think I'm gonna go with algebra first. So here we have domain, and the three domain issues that you always run into in math, you have to look, do you have a fraction, do you have a radical, or do you have a logarithm? And anytime you can say yes to one, or maybe even a couple of these, you're gonna have to look at domain. So I do have a fraction in here, all right? I don't have a radical and I don't have a log. So the big domain issue with fractions is that you can't have the denominator equal to zero. And that's exactly what we're going to look at. So let's go ahead and take a look at our denominator. And I'm just going to start to put my work here. So for domain, I want to look, when is my denominator equal to zero? And you could factor this or use the quadratic formula, but I, I think we can see that if x squared minus four is zero, x is either plus or minus two. All right. And so what that means is I need to throw those two values out of the domain. So if you think about your domain starting with all real numbers, Right, what we're saying is we want to rule out negative two and two, right? Those are not included in our domain. So I'm going to write that up now in interval notation. I want this interval, this interval, and this interval. So I'm going to go from negative infinity to negative two, and then negative two to two. Oops, let me put another little union symbol, and then two to infinity. All right, and I will keep in mind that these two x values, this 2 and negative 2, they're either going to turn into holes or they're going to turn into vertical asymptotes. Those are my two options. I just got to figure out which one we're looking at. So let's go figure out x-intercepts. That's our next one. So now x-intercepts, you can take a look at where the numerator is 0. Because basically, in, if you ever want to find an x-intercept, you're going to let the other letter 0 out, right? And so you want to let y equal 0. So what that's saying is, when is x squared plus 2 over x squared minus 4 equal to 0? And anytime you have a fraction that needs to be 0, you need to take a look at when the numerator is 0. And just as a side note, in, in whenever you have these rational functions, you're going to always set the numerator to 0 and the denominator to 0. And they mean different things. They go under different traits. But it's a lot of setting stuff to 0. All right, so let's set this numerator to 0. I'm going to get x squared plus 2, when is that equal to 0? I will subtract 2 from both sides, and I'm going to get x squared is equal to negative 2. And in the real numbers, there is no number that squares to a negative number, right? So this is going to have a non-real answer. And we're only looking for real numbers because we want to graph this. So in terms of the x-intercepts, I have none. All right, technically, if you want to talk about the x-intercepts, that would be plus or minus the square root of 2i. But again, I can't graph those on the real numbers line. Okay, so we're going to move on from there. Let's head to y-intercepts. All right, so we got our y-intercept. Here I would let x equal 0 because you always let the opposite letter of 0 out. So let's go figure this out. That would be y would equal, we had 0 squared plus 2 over 0 squared minus 4. That's 2 over negative 4, which is negative 1 half, but I'm going to write this up as an ordered pair. All right. All right, for VAs, we want to look at where the denominator only is 0. All right. Now, if we had any common factors in the numerator and denominator, those would turn into holes, but we don't. This, this numerator doesn't factor over the real numbers, so I'm actually not going to have any holes. Let me go ahead and just write that now. I don't have any. But my denominator did zero out in two places, right? So we knew that was at 2 and negative 2. So those are going to be my two vertical asymptotes. All right, now in terms of n behavior, when you go to find n behavior for a rational function, you always got to look at those degrees of the polynomial in your numerator and in your denominator. So here's what I mean. If I look at the numerator, the highest degree is x squared. And if I look at the denominator, the highest degree is x squared. And for n behavior, we really only care about that, that largest degree term in the numerator and denominator. So y is basically behaving like x squared over x squared in the long run, which is just 1. Right? x squared over x squared, anything over itself in ratio is 1. So I actually have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. All right, so I'm going to take all of this, I'm going to graph it, and then I'm going to find the range. So for me personally, I don't find the range until after I've graphed the function. 
So let's go ahead and start to take all this into account. Now, if I look at the numbers I'm dealing with, I've got negative one half, two, negative two, and one. Those aren't really large numbers. Like I'm not seeing 17, four, well, four is not that large, 40. Where I'm going with this is when I go to scale my axes, I'm gonna actually opt to let each square represent half a unit. And here's what I mean. So I'm gonna label my axes with X and Y, and I'm gonna let every two squares represent a unit. So this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna do it on the Y axis too, and hope that works out. I mean, this might be a good time to actually graph it on your calculator first, just to see, but I'm gonna roll with it. All right, so let's go through my traits. It looks like I had uh, no x-intercepts, but I had a y-intercept at zero, negative one-half. So let me go put my y-intercept on the graph. Um, it looks like I had vertical asymptotes at two and negative two. So let me use a different color here, and let's get a vertical asymptote at two. And I'm going to make that a dotted line because it's not technically part of our graph. And if you hear that noise, I think that is the street sweeper street sweeping machine coming through my neighborhood although i didn't know i had one okay and then let's go to negative two would have been here all right and then let me scroll this down here okay and i had no holes i had a horizontal asymptote at y equals one all right so I've got some options. Let's start to talk about what could happen. So for this graph, as I'm heading towards, I'll start on the left side. I could either be coming here or here on the left side, heading towards that horizontal asymptote. And then going to the vertical, I could go this way or this way, this way or this way, right? And then if I'm on this vertical asymptote, I could be on this side of it, left side or right side. Again, same deal, left side or right side, and then top or bottom. So I don't really know where all of those go. I do have, this one point here, but it's just it's just not enough. So let's go to our calculator and see if we can find some extra ordered pairs. Now, keep in mind, you could also just plug in numbers, right? You could plug in x equaling one, x equaling two, three, whatever, and get some extra points, but I'm gonna go to my calculator to do that. So let me head over to this thing. Let's go to my y equals. Now I'm gonna put x squared plus two here, and I'm gonna divide that by x squared minus four, and this is the calculator app. It, it, it does graph things slightly differently. So instead of hitting zoom six, which is what I would do on the physical calculator, I have to hit the graph button here. So I'm gonna hit graph and I, ooh, that looks fun. But on the app, it's on the bottom left. So I'm gonna hit zoom here and I'm gonna go to standard. And as I take a look at this, now I get an idea. And the cool thing about um, the, the app is I can actually just touch these things and it'll, it'll um, draw it out for me, right? So I could actually, I'm just touching things here and it's saying, hey, here's your y-intercept, that kind of fun stuff. So as I look at this, right, I, I can actually get, let me find a function value. So let me go ahead and hit calc and let's just find a value. Let's say I had x equaling negative three. It looks like the y value there is 2.2. So I'm just gonna go put that on my graph right now. So negative three comma 2.2, let's do that. So I'm gonna go to negative three, so one, two, three, and then I'm gonna go up to one, two, 2 2.2 would be somewhere around there. So that gives me some guidelines. I can see that if there is this point here, then my function must be going that way. And that matched the graph I saw. So I'm gonna clean all of this up. All right, so let me get rid of some of the possible arrows because now I know where these arrows officially go. So it looks like we're heading up here and here. And then I saw this middle part was here and here. And then I'm going to try and see what x equaling 3 would get me. So let me go back to my calculator. And now let's let me delete this and let's just do or I guess maybe I have to clear it out. It won't let me delete it. Let me see. I need to push this over. Let me just start this over. All right. I wish this would just let me delete everything. Hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna enter the number three. Oh, it looks like you can do that as well. <laughs> so I've got three comma 2.2. It looks like it's symmetric around um, the Y axis. Great, so let's go put that point here. So we've got three and then 2.2, that would be here. 
and then I can see this goes up here and it'll catch this one down here and let me erase some of my other little scribbles we don't need that arrow and we figured out these over here as well okay so now it's time to figure out the range all right so now let's look at arrows and let me color code this so i've got a down arrow right and i've got an up arrow oh i just saw an extra arrow i didn't erase all right so i know i'm going to have infinities uh, negative infinities and positive infinities because I've got the down arrow and the up arrow, but you can kind of see there's this band. Oops, I thought I had it on the highlighter. There's this band in here that there's no there's no function there, so there's no y values there. So what we need to do is we're going to start down here with these down arrows to negative infinity, and then we need to go up to whatever this maximum is. And I'm going to use my calculator to figure out what the maximum is. So let me start my range. We've got negative infinity. Let me go back to my calculator. And let's figure out what this max is. So I'm gonna opt to figure out this max. It looks like it's at my y-intercept, but let me go ahead and I'm gonna just put in a left x value of negative one and a right value of one and say get me the max there. And if I look at that, it looks like my my x or my maximum is zero and then negative one half. And it might be hard to read this because if you look at the x value, it's negative 1.73, but there's this little exponential there at the end. Like you see the e, but unfortunately you can't see the exponent. I really wish you could. Um, it just won't let me for whatever reason, but that's basically zero because it's saying it's negative 1.73 times 10 to the negative whatever. So I've got an x coordinate of zero and a y coordinate of negative one half. That is my max and that is good to know. So I've got that this happens to be the maximum, and let me use a different color. Okay, so this actually was the max. So that means that I'm going to head to positive, oh no, this was negative one half, excuse me, and I do hit that y value. All right, now the next set of y values, you can see it's, it's starting here, right, at y equals one, and then it heads up to positive infinity. But because this is an asymptote, I don't actually hit one, so I put that in parentheses. And then I go one comma infinity. All right, so let me scroll this back so we can see all of this at once. All right, and there is free response number one. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.